Let's bring this now to Congressman Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Congressman Schiff, thank you for joining the session here with General Mukasey and Dan Abrams. You've been following this for quite some time, investigating it on the House Intelligence Committee. Were you surprised by the plea deal on Friday? I wasn't surprised uh, by the plea deal. Um, the fact, though, that it was cabin to one offense uh, with uh, essentially multiple lies in that one offense does tell me as a former prosecutor that uh, given the b much broader universe of potential liability here, that Bob Mueller must have concluded that he was getting a lot of value in terms of General Flynn's cooperation. General Flynn, obviously not a minor character here. Uh, so I think this is very significant. I think the fact that in his uh, factual basis for the plea, he sets out that he wasn't acting as a rogue agent, that in fact, he was acting with the knowledge and at the direction of people who were senior members of the transition team, I think probably all of which uh, ultimately ended up in the administration, uh, is very significant. Um, and I think uh, it, it indicates, to me at least, that this is not the end of it by any means. What about that tweet yesterday from the president, who we now have been told that, uh, according to the White House, it was drafted by his attorney, John Dowd, uh, not the president, but the tweet right now still stands. Well, to me, George, actually, it is more significant if it's coming from the lawyer. Uh, the president has shown every ability to uh, prevaricate and dissemble on this subject. But the lawyer uh, is going to take not only the president's account uh, into play, but also others that he has interviewed. Uh, and this means that uh, what the attorney is saying is consistent between the president and the staff. The president knew he had lied to the FBI, uh, which means that when he talked to the FBI director and asked him effectively to drop this case, he knew that Flynn had committed a federal crime. So it, to me, frankly, it's more serious uh, coming from the attorney than it would have been just coming directly from the president. We also have this report in the New York Times today showing emails during the transition, which indicated that many others knew about these conversations that General Flynn was having with the Russian ambassador, including this key T. McFarland email where she says, if there's a tit-for-tat escalation, Trump will have difficulty improving relations with Russia, which has just thrown the USA election to him. The White House is saying that she was interpreting the Democrats' uh, view of these matters. What, is, what do those emails tell you about uh, the possible case that Mueller has? Well, we have to remember the context here, uh, which I think goes a lot to explaining uh, why Flynn lied, and that is the Russians had just helped Donald Trump in the presidential election. And immediately thereafter, President Obama sanctions Russia, Russia over their interference in our election. And you have Flynn, one of the president's top people, basically telling the Russians, don't react to the sanctions opposed over your help of our campaign. We're going to take care of this. And then lying about it. Uh, so I think it's that context that is so significant. Uh, and the fact that he wasn't doing on this on his own, that others within the top of the transition uh, were knowing of it. And indeed, the president might have been knowing of it. The best way to explain the president's reaction when he ultimately did fire Flynn and the fact that he wasn't upset with Flynn and the fact that he waited so long to fire him in the first place and that what he was really upset was the press exposing the lie would suggest, I think, that the president was knowing of exactly what Flynn did. Uh, and the question, I think, for Bob Mueller and for us in Congress is, was this directed by the president? And if it uh, and was? If so what are the consequences of that? And if Michael Flynn were to testify that this, these contacts with the Russians were directed by the president, what would that tell you? Because we all know that during transitions, administrations have contacts with foreign officials all the time. Well, what that would tell me is that uh, one of the reasons that he was intervening, the president that is, with James, Com uh, with James Comey, was that he knew that this would come to light uh, and that uh, he wanted to protect Mike Flynn lying on his behalf. Uh, and then you do get very close to a case of obstruction of justice. So uh, I think that's the significance of this context in which uh, the president was intervening. The more that he was involved in directing this, in being knowledgeable of it, uh, I think the stronger the potential case of obstruction becomes. We did see the president come out yesterday and say one more time, bottom line, no collusion. Let's take a look. What has been shown is no collusion, no collusion. There's been absolutely, there's been absolutely no collusion, so we're very happy. His attorneys are starting to take it a step further. They're Jay Sekulow to The New Yorker, to Jeffrey Tubin to The New Yorker, laying the groundwork that collusion, even if it were shown, is not a crime. Well, anytime the president has to deny something three times in a row uh, raises a profound question about whether it's true. Now here, I think you see the most palpable evidence of a collusion in terms of violating the Logan Act. 
Um, now, I agree that's not likely to be prosecuted, but let's look at that. You have the Trump transition conspiring in private with the Russians to subvert the bipartisan policy of the United States, which was to sanction Russia over its interference in our election. And so the question becomes, if they're willing to work secretly and privately at odds with U.S. policy during the transition, were they willing to do it during the campaign? Uh, and what we have already seen is that the Russians through intermediaries approached members of the Trump team, including Papadopoulos, including the president's son, and said, we possess dirt on Hillary Clinton, uh, and we would like to have a relationship with your campaign. And the campaign responded, we would love to have that. Uh, and days after this meeting in Trump Tower, for the very first time, Julian Assange announces he has received the stolen Hillary Clinton emails. So it certainly appears that what the Russians decided was that the way to help the campaign was not giving these emails necessarily directly to the campaign, but publishing them so that the Russians and the campaign could main some, maintain some form of deniability. Now, how explicit that agreement was, uh, if there was that meeting of the minds, would be a conspiracy that Bob Mueller will have to investigate. But we're also trying to get to the bottom of it so but, we can give a full report to the American people. Bottom line, do you believe that Michael Flynn will incriminate President Trump? Well, I do believe that he will incriminate others uh, in the administration. Otherwise, there was no reason for Bob Mueller to give uh, Mike Flynn this kind of a deal where even in the factual basis, you can see there are other crimes that could have been charged. Whether that will lead ultimately the president, I simply don't know. Congressman Schiff, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, George. For breaking news alerts on Michael Flynn and the Russian investigation, download the ABC News app now.